Hello everybody, I'm Richard Older and welcome to the channel. Please quickly make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing. Today we're taking a look at the five things that I like and the five things I don't like about the 280ZX Turbo, otherwise known as the L28 ET. Come on Richard, what's not to love about a turbo motor? Well, let's find out. Okay guys, now that I've shown you my inspiration and the fact that I've done lots of research on this particular motor, let's talk about the five things that I like and the five things that I don't like. And we're gonna start out with the five things that I don't like about the ZX motor. In this case, it is a 1983 280ZX turbo motor, an L28 ET. 83 was the last year that they made this. But I have a list of five things that obviously I would like to see change and maybe we'll see some changes in the future when we run it on the dyno. But these are things that I would, would have liked Nissan to have changed or otherwise kind of irked me in one way or another. The first thing is the fact that this motor is very, very low compression. And they did this probably because of the number two thing that I don't like about it. But the number one thing is the fact that it's very low compression, 7.4 to 1 static compression. And this was actually fairly common back then as a lot of the OEMs were running motors, in this case, without an intercooler, which is the number two thing. So the way that they got around that is they ran low static compression. Porsche in their turbo did that. The um, Dodge Omni, the the Grand Nationals back in the 80s, um, or the pre-Grand National stuff, the hot air motors, they all satisfied this with not running an intercooler, and then they did that by having a low static compression. And the problem with that, and the downside to that is while it adds safety margin in terms of detonation, the downside of that is it reduces power. So <laughs> it reduces power and efficiency. So it reduces fuel mileage and reduces naturally aspirated power, which in turn reduces turbo response and ultimate turbo power at any given boost level. So low compression, while it's normally associated with turbocharging, in this in this case, 7.4 to 1 compression, pretty low even for a turbo combination. But way back then, without all the sophisticated electronics and without the number two thing that we're going to talk about is probably necessary at the time. But it would be much better if you ran, and guys have done this, if you step up to the naturally aspirated uh, compression ratio, which was only like eight and a half to one. So it's not a big jump up, and it's more it's a number that we nor more normally, normally associate with like turbo applications. So let's take a look at number two. The number two thing is no intercooler. On the 280ZX turbo motor, the L28 ET, it came Basically, the turbo just discharged into an elbow and then right into the throttle body. You know, no intercooler, no front mounted air to air, no air to water, which uh, would become common later on and Nissan would use in their subsequent motors after that. But having no intercooler is part of the reason probably why they combine the very, very low compression. No intercooler and low compression kind of go together. It helps, again, a safety margin, helps eliminate detonation. But the problem with no, not having an intercooler, obviously, the safety margin detonation but also lack of power because as we saw like with the dodge guys and the 2.2 and the 2.5 stuff and with the the buick and the grand national and the hot air stuff once you add an intercooler to those applications you can get away with running a lot more boost even you gain power even running the same boost but you can run more boosts and more timing and it's just a better situation so having a factory air to air intercooler or something on the 280zx but it's a very common modification and one of the things that we're going to test not having an intercooler obviously <laughs> a big check mark against the 280zx motor the number three thing is and this is more of a personal thing and something more toward the modification end of the scale. But if you take a look at the fuel rail, and I'll show you here, take a look at the fuel rail and the injector. Now we know for any kind of performance application, we're gonna to have to upgrade the injectors anyway. So the factory injectors, I think flow 270 cc's or something in that in that range. But, and they're designed to work in the given power range that the, that the motor was gonna be operating in, and all of that works well. And if we're going to make more power, we're going to upgrade the injector size anyway. We're gonna put 70s or 80s or 1000s or whatever we put in, depending on how much power we wanna make. So when I do this stuff, especially on a turbo motor, I always look at upgrading injectors. But if you look at the fuel rail situation <laughs> and the rubber hoses that they use to connect the the rail to the injector, it's just, you know, we're going to replace all that. We're going to put a regular dedicated um, aluminum extruded fuel rail on it and they're available from the aftermarket. And it's a much better situation, makes hookup on the dyno much easier. So, so the factory 
fuel rail is <laughs> not high marks for me on the on the 280ZX turbo. So the number four thing is the fact that this is not a cross flow head. So on a cross flow head, we have the intake on one side and the exhaust on one side. And the benefit of that is that we keep the exhaust heat away from the intake. Now Nissan, obviously, and, and most non cross flow heads have some kind of shielding between the exhaust and the and Nissan obviously has that bet shielding between the exhaust and the intake manifold to stop the heat from radiating up and heating up the intake. Now, there's an argument about <laughs> how well that works. It is definitely going to be better than not having the shielding in there, but not having a cross flow head can be problematic. It, it also makes fitment for things like, you know, putting a header on there, a dedicated header to the turbo, um, turbo sizing, running pipes for intercooling. It's, it's in the way of a lot of things. Um, and so having a non cross flow head, very problematic. It limits stuff. So I, and a crossflow head on this would be better like if you were to run. I think the OS Gaiken one might have been one. And and also if you look at the, the subsequent uh series like the RB stuff, you know, the intake and the exhaust were on different sides. So it, it just works out better and I think it looks better, packages better. So the non crossflow head, definitely a minus on, on that side. The the final thing is the um no, I like the exhaust manifold and downpipe. So actually, I only have four things that I dislike about it. <laughs> uh, I was going to talk about the exhaust manifold and downpipe, but that's on the plus side. I actually like the way that Nissan designed those. You can you can hook up a variety of different turbos so that the downpipe is, size is generous. You can make lots of power. But so we're going into that. Let's talk about. I do have five things that I like about that I like about the the 280ZX motor. So let's talk about those. So now that we talked about the five things that actually make it four things that I didn't like about the 280ZX or things that I would like to change, let's talk about the five things, and I actually have five things, that I really like about the 280ZX turbo motor. And the first thing is the fact that it's a turbo motor. I mean, right off the bat, how do you not love a factory forced induction motor? And the reason that I like them, besides the fact that it's a turbo and I love everything that's involved with turbocharging, um, besides that, when the factory does a factory forced induction motor, whether it's a turbo or some some kind of supercharger, whenever they do these, they make them extra robust. And that's the way that the 280ZX Turbo is. It's very stout. So even though it's non-intercooled and all the other things that we talked about, it still has plenty of potential, meaning that we can easily turn the boost up and do all the things that we need to do because it gave us the ability to do that. It has enough strength to run this power level for a really, really long time, which means it has enough strength to run a much higher power level, albeit maybe at a shortened time. But honestly, those of us who are turning the boost up and doing crazy stuff with these are probably not thinking that we want to get two or three or 400,000 miles out of these motors. Cause let's be, let's be honest. We're probably not going to, it's, we're probably not going to have it that long. And so our, our fun probably doesn't need to quite last quite that long, but factory turbo motors, they're awesome. So the next thing I like is I like the fact that I like, and I like this about really any turbo motor. I love the fact that Nissan put turbo on the valve cover. Cause when you open the hood, on somebody that knows what they're looking at, they'll go, oh yeah, that's obviously a 280ZX turbo motor or some sort of L-series turbo motor because it has, I can see the turbo one, I can see the intake manifold, I can see the hoses. Even if I can't see the turbo down under there because we talked about the crossflow head, I can see tubing going up to an intercooler and coming back or, or, or not in the case of the factory one. But I know that it's a turbo motor. Even the uninitiated, when they pop the hood, they're gonna say, oh, that's a turbo motor. And I know that because it says turbo right there on the valve cover. And I think it's a good valve cover design. It just has good eyeball and I like it. So way to go Nissan. The next thing is the intake manifold design. I actually like the intake design. It is a, a long branch. It has long runners. It's good for torque production. I think we'll find out in, in all of the testing, we're going to find out that that manifold actually works fairly well. I know I'm going to get guys that tell me, oh, it doesn't flow enough. You need the like short, big uh, plenum Grady style kind of thing. And yes, Ultimately for flow, if you want to go to a bigger runner and a shorter runner, what you're going to do is you're going to extend the RPM range and it's going to want to make power much higher. But what it's also going to do is make less power down low. So I'll demonstrate the adjust uh, with an adjustable intake design what happens when we change runner length. But the factory intake, again, I like it. The one thing that I would want to change on the factory intake manifold, and this is something that all of the L series guys do when they're swapping in 280, especially if you're running an aftermarket ECU on it, is you get rid of 
all of the stuff on the top of it. You just clean up the intake manifold so you can see the intake manifold and it's not full of switches and hoses and everything going on. On the factory stuff, you know, you have to, they had to kind of do that. But if you're swapping that into something else, luckily you can get rid of a lot of that stuff. So the next thing is I like the fact that it has a factory oil cooler. I think that that's a good design, especially on a turbo motor, because let's face it, some of these guys might be running things. I mean, back in the day, this thing was good for more than 140 miles an hour, and that may not seem like much now, but back in the day, it was fairly fast. This was thing was like a 143 or 144 mile an hour car right from the factory, and anybody that turned the boost up or put an intercooler on them, they would go even faster. So it wouldn't be unusual that a guy might be out running that, let's say, <laughs> in the Silver State or something like that, and then running at high speeds for a very long time. Oil cooler, always a good idea on a turbo motor, and I like the fact that they did that right from the factory. So the final thing, and, and this is one of the things that just speaks to me about this motor. This is like, if you look when I first bought my, I, I'm, I'm a Z owner, so I've owned two of them, uh, both early ones, 240 and 260. But one of the coolest things that I like about the Z, and one of the things that speaks to me about the early one, is the little underhood light. So it's really elegant and cool. It's off to the side. You have a little switch that you can flick and the light can go on or you can unscrew the cap. It's got a little dome on it and it has a little, it has a little electrical cord that unwinds and you can wind it up and you can hook it up on your thing so that it ha you have a light for when you're working on your car. That those kinds of little touches I love. And the thing that I like on the 280ZX turbo motor is the pop-off valve. I know some guys are going to say, Richard, but wait, don't you mean a blow-off valve? No, I actually mean a pop-off valve because a blow-off valve is something that is on the, on the turbo side of the throttle body. So what happens is when you are boosting something and then you close the throttle, there's a big buildup of pressure and there needs to be an escape route for that pressure. So a blow-off valve allows that to happen. This is on the other side of the throttle body. It's just a pop-off valve or, or if you will, an overpressure valve. It is a simple mechanical device, a spring-loaded diaphragm that what happens is Nissan said, look, if we, if what happens if the vacuum line or boost line go into the wastegate or the electronics or something fails, we need, we need to make so that this thing cannot make boost. And the way that you do that is with this valve and it with a spring and a diaphragm. And what it does is if the boost gets too high in the intake manifold, it just opens up and says, look, you're not making a whole bunch of boost. And I think that that's a simple, like elegant design. Like I said, and it's just one of the things that speaks to me. It will obviously be removed for us to make high boost and we'll just put a plug in there and make sure that we fill that. But it was very cool of Nissan to do that to begin with. So there you have it. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. All the things that I like and that I dislike about the L28. But don't worry, there's lots and lots of testing coming up. As soon as I can get this thing on the dyno, I promise, lots of turbo. You know, I often get asked, hey, Richard, what is your inspiration for testing the motors that you want to test? Sometimes it's very simple. Sometimes it's ones that I just find in the wrecking yard. Sometimes it goes back even deeper than that. And on this L-Series Nissan, it goes way back. And I can point my finger exactly why it's from this book. If you have not read this and you're interested in turbocharging, this is Maximum Boost by Corky Bell. It is required reading for anybody that wants to learn anything about turbocharging or everything about turbocharging. Very good book. But for me, way back, I remember looking at this particular picture. You can see in there, this is an L-Series Nissan with side draft uh, Bakunis on it. So this is a turbo setup blowing through side draft Makunis. And ever since I saw that picture, I have wanted to turbocharge an L-Series motor, either a 240, 260, or 280. In this case, it's going to be a 280ZX turbo motor, a factory original turbo motor. But ever since I saw that in the Corky Bell book, I wanted to do this. So now it's time to get going. The other thing that inspires me to do this is I went on searching online everywhere to try to find information on what happens when you do turbocharge these motors or what happens when you do upgrade if they're a factory turbo motor. And I'm oftentimes disappointed in the amount of information that's out there. What happens when you add an intercooler? How much power do you get? How much does it lower the charge temperature? What happens when you increase the boost? What happens when you put a camshaft in there? What happens when you put a ported head on there? What happens when you change the downpipe? What happens when you change from a cast iron exhaust manifold to a header? Basically, what happens when you do any kind of upgrade that we normally do on any turbo motor? what exactly happens when you do these things one at a time and that's what i go look for and that's what i try to provide so what i'm going to do is run through a series of tests on an l series motor on the engine dyno because let's face it it's going to be a lot easier the other thing that's going to be beneficial is also i'm going to have a standalone management system so i can make sure that the tune is optimized 
for every combination. That way we have back-to-back -back tests so we can finally answer some of these questions. What happens when I do these moms?